Hello guys, hope you're doing well. On this week about this YouTube series and podcast series and all of it, we're going to be speaking about crosses. Last week, we got the opportunity to speak with Faku. I have future goalkeeper coaches coming, different players coming as well. So I look forward to that. I think this is going to be a good thing to learn, to get to know more people. And again, as I mentioned, to grow as a goalkeeper is going to be more crucial. For me, as a coach, to learn more and for you guys to learn different ideas, different point of views, and learn more about the position that we love. So going to the topic, today we're going to talk about crosses. I think if you have the opportunity, watch the YouTube video because you will be able to see all the examples. I'm going to try my best to explain it, to talk about the examples, the videos. But again, this is a topic that you most likely would like to see the examples and see exactly the videos of what am I talking about? Okay, so a little index here. We're going to have a small introduction, just talking about crosses. Then we're going to talk about some team principles, five key principles. We're going to be speaking about the position with some examples, watching some videos. And then we're going to speak about how to incorporate this in training and what to do next. Again, here we go with the introduction. So again, I think... In the professional level, you don't see that much of crossing game. Still, it happens, of course. You have corner kicks, you have fouls, you have just crosses in general. But I think if you go down to a little bit like college level, stuff like that, you tend to see more of long balls, less of the team trying to build, trying to have a special idea. Um, so again, trying to play like long or bring the ball up. So I think cross is going to play an important role. If you're a goalkeeper, you, of course, need to be able to measure the ball right. You need to be able to go and attack the ball. Here's where the size also matters a little bit. Of course, if you're a taller goalkeeper, you're going to have way more reach than a shorter goalkeeper. If you have a good vertical jump, you will still be able to jump and use your hands to reach the ball. But still, size will matter in this topic. But again, we're going to talk about the principles and what are the most important things about this anyways crossing really crucial uh, you first need to identify a lot there are different ways of crossing what determines a crossing you tell me the an answer but from my point of view a crossing will be just a delivery that goes to the box okay the principles again as we mentioned identify the different types of crossings so for example as we can see in the picture a cross can come from an open play. A cross can come from a foul. A cross can come from a free kick. I'm oh, sorry. Well, that's the same as the foul. But it can come from a corner kick. All these are scenarios, right? And then we want to know if the ball is being driven, if the ball is going to float, or what are the different outcomes of the ball. So definitely that's going to be important. I know there is a famous press that says banana, that the ball is coming like this or how, what is the trajectory, what is the technique that the player is going to be using in order to send that technique. Now, talking about the different type of crosses, we're going to go now into different techniques. So one of the main questions that goalkeepers normally do and normally says is what need to bring up whenever you're cutting a, um, a cross, right? Me personally, what I believe is the right answer or believe if it's better for me, is always to bring the knee that is furthest from the ball, meaning that you're going to be jumping with the leg that is closest to the ball. Let me repeat that because I know it's a lot of words there. Always bringing the knee that is furthest from the ball up. Meanwhile, I'm jumping when the one that is closest to the ball. Why? Okay, here's the reason why. Of course, as a key, Again, we can bring the same concept as a power step and stuff like that. You always want to push with the leg that is closest to the ball. Second, whenever you bring the ball that is further, you're actually protecting yourself from the players that are coming to your direction. If you bring the other leg, the one that is closest to the ball, you have already passed those players. Like the ball has already passed that trajectory, and then you're not really defending yourself from people coming and trying to hit the ball. I'm not sure if that makes sense. We're going to see some videos again, and you will be able to determine that. 
So technique is going to be crucial. With the technique, you can also add, and this is part of decision making, how are we going to catch it? When do we want to just punch it? Should we go with one punch? Should we go with both hands? Should we just touch it? Okay, those little things are going to be important about the technique that we're going to perform. Now, positioning. Positioning also plays an important role. So, for example, if the ball, if there is a foul in the super far, like let's say middle of the field or something like that, and you know they're lining it up to make a cross, you're not just going to sit in the back of the goal, right? You want to actually protect the zone where you actually know that the ball is, might come here. That way they don't want to cross it there because they know if you cross it, the goalkeeper is going to be standing there. So position is going to play the most important role here because it also is going to play with the mind of the striker. Again, for example, if you have a corner kick and then the goalkeeper is in a wrong position, it's going to be easier for the striker or to the player to actually put it on the play that they wanted. But if the goalkeeper is actually standing there, what is the point of putting the ball there? Okay, so we need to be really familiar on the difference between defending the zone and defending the goal. So, for example, let's see over here, in the example that we have in the picture, you can see, I'm not sure what goalkeeper is that. Looks like Monaco, probably. I'm not 100% sure. But, as you can see, the, the ball is actually moving, so it's not from a foul or something like that. And the goalkeeper is not really on the angle of the goal. The goalkeeper is stepping a little bit outside because he acknowledged that the players are making a run and the cross and the technique that he, the, the striker might end up using is kind of curving it. So he's chilling a little bit in order for him to cut the ball. When the striker sees this over here, of course, he thinks twice, why well, am I going to cross the ball if the goalkeeper is going to reach that? And then if the goalkeeper have a touch or even like a slightly finger on the ball, it's going to change the whole trajectory. So it's going to mess up the strikers. So little, those little details you need to be very mindful about. And then it comes down to the decision making again. Same thing. For example, if there is a corner and it is really crowded, am I gonna try to catch it or I'm just gonna try to punch it? I'm gonna <clears throat> try to touch it. Uh, if I didn't measure the ball right, I'm gonna step back. Where I'm gonna do? So those little decisions you need to start developing during practice. Okay, here we're gonna talk with some examples again. Most of the videos here are from Ederson. I just want to take one goalkeeper and talk about him in general. So here we find Liverpool. I'm not sure who are they playing against. I believe it's Arsenal, probably. Might be Arsenal. I'm not sure. But here we go. So we're, we're starting from a corner kick. The person, the corner kick from the left side of the field, the person is taking the corner kick is right. So that means that it's a, in, in swing. It's coming inside. Now, the position of the goalkeeper, see, this is going to be crucial. The goalkeeper is starting a little bit backwards. Why is the goalkeeper starting backwards? Easy. Because it's easier to go in front than actually to back up. So the goalkeeper always wants to start backwards. That way, he's not backpedaling, that it's going to take longer, and then trying to fix that small mistake. It's just easier to just go in front and run forward, right? So he starts a little bit backwards. Now, as you can tell, the person is in swing, right? So whenever the person can actually curve the ball to the goal, it's going to be dangerous because, they, as I mentioned, they can curve the ball in the ball, so we cannot, like, step really full out because what if they score? So here's the example. The guy goes there. He's close to the line. And then he goes forward. If I'm not sure if this is going to be able to show the sound of the video. But you can even, even with the stadium being this full, even with the narrator, you can listen to Ederson, uh, sorry, Allison, screaming for keeper, right? Something to be mindful. I see a lot of goalkeepers doing this. They yell keeper when they have it on their hands. What is the point of yelling keeper when you have it in your hands? There is no point of it. Keeper is for you to aware people to get out of the way, right? So you want, whenever you, you're measuring there, you're measuring. And now you know you're sure that you're going to go for the ball. Go and yell at keeper, okay? Make that. Boom. So that's the example over there. As you can see, it's really crowded. Again, he kind of didn't jump with any leg. Again, he was crushing, crushing, crushing. But he actually gets connected and then kind of gets fouled. 
Again, that's part of the knee part. Okay, second example, Manchester City. Now you see the the corner is taken from the left, from the right. The person taking the corner is right footed, so it's an out swing, right? So the ball will be being like a banana with a curve going out of the goal. It's really hard for the ball actually to get into the ball. That's where how we can see here, Allison is kind of shimming a little bit. So he's not a stepping two steps in front of the line. Now he's stepping like four steps in front of the line. And then the angle of your hips is also going to be really crucial. You don't want to be facing all the way straight. You want to open up your legs a little bit. So see that Alice, uh, I don't know why I want to continue seeing Ayerson. Alison is in a diagonal way, facing diagonal. I don't know if I can do like a laser here, annotate. I'm not sure. Let's try this. Spotlight. Perfect. Good. So again, angle facing this way, out swinger. So now he's shooting a little bit. Boom. And see, even the ball was coming a little bit inside of the goal. He still is able to back up because the ball, again, is most likely to go out. It's really hard to put it in and then just back up at the jump. Again, we can see he doesn't jump with any knee. He gets the contact and then he falls. Of course, the fall, you cannot touch the goalkeeper there. But as you can see, as you can notice, something that Allison is not doing the well is coming out with the knee. I mean, in both scenarios, he has been fouled. Like, he has had collapsed with somebody. Okay, our example, in swing. Now see that he's still more inside, so it's not like that far like they used to be. Now he's a little bit more inside. The ball is coming. Now he says keeper, he comes with the knee. And then what we spoke about, the decision making. There is a lot of people in the video, there's a lot of people. He decided to go with the knee, gel keeper, go with the knee up, and then he punched the ball. So he know it's not a clear for him to actually catch it. It can be dangerous for him to catch it. Not in the fact of, oh, he's going to get injured or something like that, but in the fact of, like, the ball might drop or something like that. So he go with both hands and then just punch, get rid of the problem, right? And then you can see he's still standing because he went with the knee. Okay, another example, coming from a foul now, not a corner. Uh, the foul is kind of 15 yards from the middle. So let's see, example, the ball is coming. He's cheating again. He's a little bit outside. He's not all the way in his line. If it is a foul outside, if it is far, then you are able to actually come a little bit outside. He's timing it, and then he just wait for it. Knee comes up. The knee that is forward just come up, and then he's fighting against one player, so he decides just to punch it. Okay. Again, when you have doubt, it's better to punch it. There's nothing wrong on punching it. Another example. 20 yards from the middle, the ball is coming. Ederson is already, um, Allison, sorry, I don't know why I want to say Ederson so bad. Allison is already in the line of the 16, and the ball is coming. He's super relaxed. Something that is really crucial about this crossing, you don't want to start moving just because the ball moves, okay? So be ready in your position and then understand where you want to go. You don't want to go, like whenever the ball, a lot of goalkeepers do it. Whenever the ball goes, they start running, and then they're like, oh, no, I should back up. So now they start backing up, and now there's a back and forth. Now, stay in the position, the position you seek, you, you select, and then go and attack the ball, okay? Don't start moving your feet back and forth. He goes, he measures it, and he gets fouled. They didn't call it, but he actually gets mad because they didn't call the foul. But those are a little bit of examples. Um... I'll play it again, but it wouldn't make sense because the people in the podcast won't be able to listen to it. So let's go to the other pictures. Okay, now here, same scenario. Something I want to speak about. Your positioning is going to be whatever you feel comfortable for you, okay? This is something that I always tell people. I can have my own technique. I have, uh, other goalkeeper coach can think about another technique. If your technique is keeping the goals out, is good, okay? Understand it. Now, if they're scoring and there is 
ways to fix that. And that's, for example, my way, try it. And if it works, it works. Okay, so be mindful about it. Again, the goalkeeper is outside. Um, something I didn't like that much about here is how she's like in the goalkeeper position. Honestly, on a cross, you don't really want to be in the goalkeeper position. You want to be a little bit more straight because if you're in the goalkeeper position, then you're going down, then for going up, so it doesn't really make sense. Plus, you never see goalkeepers running in the goalkeeper position. So you just want to be more relaxed, more of a running position. <clears throat> I actually believe this is a goal, if I'm honest with you, or a foul and then a rebound or something like that. I'm not sure. I remember watching the video, but... Uh, yeah, I will fix that position a little bit. Probably we can even cheat a little bit more. Again, it's minute 90, 1-1. One, one. Just scare, scare them of you being outside. But they were most likely going to cross that because it was 1-1. One, one. Okay, second position. Second example. Again, same goalkeeper. She's still kind of in the goalkeeper position. and will just be a little bit straight. Now, this is something that I learned later in my career was the position in the first spot. So there are two different options. You can start in the back again and then make the run. In this case where, so the people that are listening, the ball is from, let's say, 30 yards, 20 yards, sorry, from the middle, attacking to the left. And the goalkeeper is kind of covering the first post, but they are in the 60. Okay. So in this case, it's easy for you to actually attack the ball diagonal besides starting all the way back and then going forward, okay? So the most likely is that the player is going to cross it to that first post. It's going to be rich. It's going to be easy for you to just reach over there. Now, if they cross it to the second post, since this is the right angle, you're still able to run like kind of on a V and then attack the ball, okay? So you actually don't need to start all the way here in the back and then attack it. You can start from the front, and since your hips are still facing in front, you're able to attack to the first post over here, and then you're also able to attack to the second post. Okay, so again, if you're listening to this in YouTube, eh, sorry, in Spotify, I really recommend you to come to YouTube and watch these different clips. Uh, I believe this is a video, and this is just another example. Again, look here, the perfect example of the knee. This is a foul from the middle as well. The ball is coming in an angle. The knee, right knee is coming up. He's jumping from the left. The ball is coming from the left. He's jumping with the left foot. He's protecting himself. And then the players that are coming, for example, here, are being denied. If he jumps with the other one, this player, so if, if he jumps with the left foot, the player that is coming from the other side is going to be able to actually come in and he can probably connect with the ball, right? And we don't want this. See that these players are out of the pictures. And then even if they're running here, they're going to head over here. So what is the point of bringing that knee up? Because these players are going to come in here and they want to protect us. And basically, yeah, again, this is a really deep topic. And I think I spoke about it really quick. We went through different examples. I don't want to overwhelm you with a lot of information. <clears throat> so we will just keep it simple like that. And then I said we we're going to talk about training, definitely. So, well, you had the examples. Now, about training. I feel like we don't train crosses as much as we can. Again, this is something that might be particular. It can change a lot. But you still really need to be really coordinated. You still need to understand where to position yourself. So you better start implementing this on your training. It's not about, not all the goalkeeping training is about the fancy stuff. It's not about the high dive and all that. You also need to start putting 10 balls in those areas where you're getting fouls and then just having the crosses and attacking the ball. I know sometimes it's lame because you're not diving and doing those stuff, but it's really crucial for you to understand where you're going to be more comfortable where you can cheat a little bit, how you're going to move, one knee, are you going to work? So something that I like to do with my goalkeepers, I start with the basic, again, my methodology is starting with the basic, the technique, the drills, the small bubble, and then I start developing more. So for example, we can do kind of a coordination thing where they're doing fast feet and then coming up, bringing the right knee, the knee that you need to come, bringing it up, timing it well, okay? 
finding the ball on the highest point. Don't wait for the ball to come down. Find it on the highest point, okay? So those little details, and then from there, start evolving where up until the end that you can actually, like, start from the middle, pass it to a player, and then the player is crossing the ball, and then the goalkeeper needs to take the decision of where he's going to position, where the ball is with. So that's going to be crucial. Again, I can upload some videos on YouTube, some videos on Instagram about training sessions and stuff like that. So you will have the information, okay? No excuses. And what to do next? Of course, if you still have some doubts, ask me. This is my second episode of solo recording. So of course, it's not going to be the greatest. But ask me some questions. I can answer some questions. And then watch more videos. Again, you learn a ton when you start watching. When I start being a goalkeeper coach and I start watching different clips and I start watching more and trying to understand more concepts, now when I play, it makes my life easier. I don't need to work hard. I just know where the ball is going to go. So I just position myself there. And it looks silly. It doesn't look like I'm the best goalkeeper coach in the world. I mean, the best goalkeeper in the world, but I know where the ball is. Here. So what to do next? Just keep learning. Keep showing up. Um, and start implementing these training sessions. Okay, keep watching soccer. Um, thank you very much for watching all the way here. Hope to see you in the next episode. Have a good one.